Job chapter 36. I want to talk to you about the blessing of complete obedience today. We had a, just a tremendous service this morning, and I believe this service is going to be even more tremendous, sir. The blessing of complete obedience. Obedience is not a word that's very popular today in our vocabulary, but um, we live in a society that is constantly battling the system, fighting for what we want, looking to see what we can get away with um, without having to submit to obedience or authority or anything like that. But I want to talk to you about the blessing of obedience because God it is it, premium with God, it's premium with Him. And if you were here Wednesday night, I think I told you about some uh, radical decision that Deb and I made early on in our Christian life. And um, it caused us to make some not only radical decisions, but caused us to step out into some really, really, really radical obedience. And um, th those of you that's been here a while, y'all remember before we changed out our background, I had a big, pretty, chrome-looking obey God up there. And that became my signature. It became my, my signature and my anthem for my life. Because back in 1990, I'll never forget it. I was uh, in my dormitory room and uh, in uh, Korea, and I was crying because I said, God, this is hard. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. Anybody ever been there? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not Kunsan, but uh, 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 God, this is too hard. I didn't sign up for this. That's what I'm talking about. That hard play for you like, God, okay. <laughs> what? Anyway, so I was crying. I was crying real tears and uh, grown man tears. <laughs> and, uh, and God spoke to me. I mean, just as clear, clear as a bell. And this is what he said. He said, because you obeyed me, I will uh, bless you. And if you keep obeying me, you'll never want for anything. That was in 1990, November 1990. And uh, I said, okay. I'm going to obey you. And that was a turning point in my life, and I began to study the Bible and the script that I'm about to read to you. Um, I didn't even know was in the Bible. I found it out later that I found out later that God has a lot to say about obedience. And I want you to understand that if you want to step into God's best, you have to to walk in obedience. Um, it's, it's real to me. Um, as When we come into the kingdom of God, the Bible said we've been bought with a price. Now, you don't have to come into the kingdom, but if you come, you have to understand you're not your own. You can't just do what you want to do. Right? right? Whoever owns you, you know, there's the same business where whoever has the gold makes the... Oh, okay. Whoever has the gold makes the rules. So me coming into the kingdom, I don't tell God what I'm going to do. I don't tell God how I'm going to do it, when I'm going to do it, if I'm going to do it. Um, he said, whoever comes to me, uh, in, in uh, Hebrews he said, without faith it's impossible to come to God. But whoever comes to him must, must, M-U-S-T. That means that uh, that's an imperative necessity. Which means that if you, you don't have to come, but if you come, you got to do it this way. And so that's what God, and I found out that that's what obedience was all about. And, um, and I began to study this, and it, it changed, transformed my life because I was, I was thinking I could just kind of, you know, buffet this thing. You know, uh, uh, take the roast beef and the ham and skip over the, the arti artichoke and the broccoli and just go on over to the red velvet cake. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all hungry today? <laughs> Well, y'all ain't home. Y'all just got here. We've been here all morning. Oh, okay. All right. But um, actually, I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't had any cake since December. I, I put myself on a, you ain't having no pastry till your birthday, July 9th. So July 9th, all y'all can bring me some cake and cookies. <laughs> make up for them seven months. No, I'm just kidding. Don't bring me now. Uh, freedom. <laughs> freedom. Anyway, so, so, <laughs> talking about, uh, Talking about obedience. What was that before I got off on that one? 
Huh? <laughs> yeah. So, so I find I'm, I can't just skip over. I can't skip over things and just do what I want to do. And I found out, you know, over the last 30 years or so, that that's a major issue. That's a major issue. It's not a sidebar. But see, I have to, see, if I want, man, if I want God's best, obedience has to come to the top of the list. And so, because I'm not my own, I, I check with the master, I check with my owner to see what he wants me to do. Yeah. And even the will of God for your life, you don't pick and choose it, you discover it. Yeah. See, you already came from God's factory engineered for certain things to do in your life, and so you just find out what that is, and then you go get educated. Yeah. Education is, to help, is supposed to help you pull out the gift that's already in you. You don't go looking for something. That's why some people work all their life for a long time and then say, dog, I'm, I, dog, I'm not fulfilled. Why am I doing this? Because, because the obedience starts early. And then the interesting, what's the first thing God tells these little kids to do? Obey. You know why? Because he wants that, he wants that built in. He figured if I can get that tree early while it's still tender and get obedience built in, they'll grow up to be obedient adults. Because there are people, see, people, it's amazing parents, we're something, we want people that always obey us, all our kids to obey us. But he said, God said, you can't be in authority until you're what? Under, Under authority. authority. And so a lot of rebellion happens in our lives because, <laughs> below us, because we're not in authority. So, I want to talk to you about, let me read this scripture. <laughs> I went off this morning too. I, I, I think I feel it again. So anyway, so God, God told me, he said, in this dormitory room, he said, if you obey me, I'll take care of you. And he did, man. I mean, when he told me that our needs had needs. I mean, it was bad. It was terrible. The boy was crying. I didn't let her know that, though. I was crying. I'm like, God, I messed up. But then he gave me this. Look at it. Job 36, 11. This is going to be a liberating day for somebody. Uh, verse 11 says, if they obey in one, Serve. they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. But if they do not obey, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Now, I said this uh, the other day on our Facebook page. I said, um, being out of the will of God is very expensive. It's expensive to be out of the will of God. It will cost you in setbacks. It will cost you in frustration. It can cost you in sickness. It can even cost you uh, uh, premature death. Yeah. Being out of the will of God is extremely expensive. Out of the will of God, disobedience, it's all the same thing. Now, it's amazing. I was thinking about uh, Jonah. Y'all remember Jonah? Jonah, the Bible says that God told Jonah to go down to Nineveh and to say a certain thing. He went the opposite way. He went to Tarsus, a place called Tarsus. He said, I don't want to go to Nineveh. I'm not going down there. And so he went down where he wanted to go. And the Bible says this. He got on a ship and the people on the ship, all of a sudden, all hell started breaking loose for Jonah. And then the people on the ship like, hey man, what's up? We were doing fine. And all, you got on the ship, all this hell breaking loose. What's up with that? And he said, well, I'm supposed to go down there uh, where God sent me, but I ain't going. And then he told him this. He said, the reason why y'all going through all of this stuff is because I'm not obeying God. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. He told him. Yeah. It's in, yeah. now, now, think about it. See, my obedience, my, my, obedience, my disobedience can take her through a whole bunch of stuff because she's on my ship. That's right. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. See, this disobedience is not just about me. I can cause my family to go through hell all because I decide I ain't obeying God. I don't want to do that. And they said, well, I said, let's throw, they said, well, let's throw the board off. He told them. He said, if y'all throw me off here, y'all be fine. Yeah. So I want to ask this question right up front because I really want to drive this point home. So God best come through obedience. That what, what's, Is there any Thing in my life and in your life that we say, God, I know I'm supposed to do it. I'm not doing that right now. God, give me, let me get straight first and then I'll make some changes. You No, get straight now. Make the change now because disobedience is, is, is expensive and not only is it expensive, it can be very, very dangerous. 
Very dangerous. Yeah. So I want to talk about it because God is so precious. He is so precious to see. Here's something about, I found out about God too. When I disobey, God will let me live long enough to see somebody else walking in the blessing that I should be walking in. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. He's that good. He said, you know, you should have been walking in this. Obedience. Everybody say obedience. Okay. Now, complete obedience. All right. Now, I want you to, um, well, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 22. We're going to look at Abraham. Because this is so very, very important. And I believe that if I can just obey God and make the changes and just do what he asked me to do. I mean, something's just a simple, I mean, simple stuff. Just simple stuff. I'm not talking about some big old, you go start a ministry over there in Cambodia somewhere. God may tell you, can you go witness to your neighbor? What about the guy on the other side of your cubicle? Does he even know you're a Christian? God may just say, listen, just tell him you're, you're a blessing. What about doing your neighbors? You know, God may send you, he may not send you to Africa, he may send you next door just to clean somebody's driveway. And that obedience is just as huge as you going to Cambodia, start saving a, a minute, starting the ministry and saving young kids. Obedience. Now look at this in Genesis chapter 22. All right, all right, everybody calm down, calm down. <laughs> now, now it came, uh, verse one, now it came to pass after these days, of these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there the burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. God's given him some instruction. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of the young men with him and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and rose, arose and went to the place of which God had told him. God told him to go to a specific place. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I are going yonder and do what? Worship. Did you know that's the first time the word worship was used in the Bible? So now, you know, I talked in the offering about the act of worship offering. And then we, we sang and prayed. We all know that's worship. But see, the highest form of worship is obedience. That's the highest form of worship is obedience. God, I do what you want me to do. I, I, when I, see, see, when I have specific instructions, I mean, God told him what to do. It was laid out, and I choose not to do it. That is, mm, that is blatant disobedience. It's not worship. I can sing it. I can I worship you Lord, all I want to. God, like, I ain't hearing none of that. He said, he said you worship me with your lips. But your heart. Because, see, this is heart worship right here. He said, your heart is far from me. I hear what you're saying, but I ain't receiving it. Come on, Pastor. Mm -hmm. See, like we're going to worship. Men are like, we're going, we're going to worship and we're coming back. Obedience. Look at verse 9, please. Then they came to the place where the God had told him. He went to the place God told him. He didn't go to another place. He went to the place God told him. And Abraham built an altar there, placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac, his son, and laid on the altar, laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand, took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abram, Abram, and he said, here I am. And he said, watch this now. Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know. For now I know. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. The angel said, now I know. We all, look, look, look up. We all need to have a now I know experience in my life, in our life. All of us are going to have to pass the do I know test. It's easy to say, God, I love you. I worship you. You're number one. All of us are going to have to pass a now I know test. God is going to call for something precious. God is going to call for something that, and, and something I'm going to teach you in a minute, why it's so hard to disobey God all the way. So after the day, it's going to be easy for you because you came to church. Amen. But all of us are going to have to have an experience. Now I know. God knows, but see, we got to know. 
I got to know, do I really love God? Or am, I, am, I, am I just, just putting on? Or am I ready to go to, am I just going to go to a certain point? Now I know. Because, see, Abraham, you're not withholding. He said, Abraham, you're not withholding anything from me. I see now. You really say you really want to go to the next level. You really want to have my best in your life. Because now you know that you won't hold anything back from me. God already knew what you were going to do. But now the angel know and I know. And so I tell you what. Until you have passed that experience. Until we pass that experience. We'll never see. We'll never see. See next level living requires next level obedience. And, and God wants to know, can I come into your life and come into every compartment, is every compartment available and open to me? Or do, do I have to wait until I get access? Now I know. Abraham, now we know. You serious, boy. We thought you were just putting on because, you know, you wanted us to, to bless you with a new car. But we know now. <laughs> okay. So, look at verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of the heaven, and he said, By myself I sworn, said the Lord, because you have done this. What's this? Obey. Obeyed. And have not withheld your son, your only son. Here comes the, here come the blessing. Here comes the blessing of complete obedience. Blessing, I will bless you. Yes. And multiplying, I will multiply you. Your descendants as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is on the seashore, and the descendants shall possess the gates of the enemy. Listen, this stuff coming all over your babies, your grandbabies. Yeah. Everybody coming in your house. You may be raising your nephews, your nieces, foster kids. It's coming on all of them. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. I wrote this down. Complete obedience is your intimate connection. Complete obedience is your intimate connection to a loving, powerful, almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the Bible lets us know, and I, I remember this on, ministered this on Easter, how God's love is unconditional. There's nothing I can do to make him love me more or make him love, make him love me less. Now, but I want to say this because it's still true. Um, you cannot be unloved by God. Impossible. But you can't be unblessed by him. What does that mean? Well, you can be unloved by him. You can't be unloved by him. But you can't be unblessed by him because you're blessed because of your obedience. You're blessed by what you do. Jesus said in Luke 6, 14, he said, blessed are those who hear my word and do them. And then he went on to say, they will be unshakable unshakable. Whatever comes to your life won't even shake you. So not only am I pleasing God with my obedience, but something happens down in my root that whatever comes, I will not be unshakable. Hallelujah. So obedience is extremely important. It's extremely important. So, I mean, even the little, I know sometimes we, we want to keep this thing so spiritual, but, but where you work, where you work, <laughs> you know, the people in your life, can you, can, where God, God may have you somewhere. You know, we have this run mentality. We got a running ministry in the body of Christ. What do you mean? The least little bit of opposition, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And what God will do, God will necessitate a situation. I'll tell you what. Don't take my word for it. I didn't go ahead in the first service. Go to Jonah. Hold, hold your place wherever you're at. Where you at? Okay. Go to Jonah, chapter 1. Let me show you something. Let me show you how God works. Let me see. I can find it. Okay, there it is. So, what are you going to say, Pastor? Okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to set it up. Go to Jonah chapter 1. That's in the Old Testament. Jonah. J-O-N-A-H. Oh, you got that computer. Come on, you can find it. But see, sometimes God will send you, you may be working for somebody you can't stand. And God is trying to develop and mature something in your life. And he's trying to tell you, listen, listen, it's not for you to run off now. And, and people do it in churches, they do it in jobs, they do it, they do it, you know, folks run away from their families, all of that. And then God is like, no, 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 I got you here for a reason. This, this is not the devil. What you're going through is not the devil. 
I'm trying to mature your, you. I'm trying to develop it because I got something for you, but I can't let you go there because you can't hold it once you get there until you develop this right here. Are you listening to me? And so a lot of times, people, they run all over town or all over the country. I got to get over here. I got to get over here. No, God, you, what you got to do is get obedient. And so, okay, you, you, look at this, J uh, Jonah chapter 1, um, um, okay, well, let's start with verse 1. Now, the Lord, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah and the son of somebody saying, arise to go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarsus, where, from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarsus. So he paid the fare, went down into it to go with them to Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. Now look at the verse 4. Look at it. <laughs> but the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. Who sent out the wind? It ain't the devil. The Lord said, okay, okay, you're going to disobey me. I'm going I'm to I'm create a situation for you, and you're going to have to cry out. Yeah. So a lot of times, we think the devil. We, we give the devil credit for some wins. God stirred that thing up. God stirred that thing. God will put you, good God, I know, God will put you, God will put you right under somebody, right under somebody, and they're as abrasive, as abrasive as sandpaper. And God will bring them into your life just to smooth off some edges so he can get you to fit where he sets you. And so, because you can't fit until you get that stuff off of you. And so God said, I'm going to bring somebody to your life just to help you straighten some stuff out. Because I was trying to get you to listen to Friendly when he was preaching that word to you. But you don't want to listen. No, you don't want to they don't know what they're talking about. So that's okay. I'm going to give you somebody. I'm going to pay them from 9 to 5 to get yourself straight. So everybody that, that's rubbing you the wrong way ain't your enemy. Some of them your best friend. Some of them your best friend. So go ahead and let them rub you. Let them rub you. Let them rub you. God sent the thing. God sent it. Why? Because God loves you. He, see, obedience is my connection to a, int, my intimate connection to a heavenly father that loves me. He already sees where he's trying to take me. Obedience, listen, on the other side of your obedience is the move of God that you've been wanting in your life. And so he sent, God sent the wind. Look, look, well, let's keep reading. And when the... So the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God. And they threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down to the lower parts of the ship and had laid down and went to sleep. Okay, look up again. See, oh Lord. See, some of us got some folks in our lives, even living with us. And they're down there asleep. They're reading all this hell going on in the house. Got this stuff coming in through the internet. Or through the windows. I'm just saying. It ain't you. You love God. You praying, Shanda, Misa, Lashanda, Harita. You praying. You, you're serving God. You're tithing. You, you're offering. You're serving in the ministry. Why is all this hell breaking loose? Who's on your ship? Who's on your ship? Who's sleeping? You up there working hard. Trying to serve God. And you got a sleeper. I didn't go here in the first service. I don't know why I'm going here now. But I'm up there here. See, and that's why in the ministry, I'm like, when I find out folks ain't right, you got to get off the ship. We love you. You can come. So if some of y'all here, you in the ministry and you ain't right, 
get off the ship. Just sit outside and watch. Because we're working hard. Now, let me show you something. Now, see, I don't know, Freed. I ain't planning on going this way, boy. Mm, mm, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. See, we don't make the connection sometimes. That's why God said, you know, uh, uh, evil communication corrupts good manners. Yeah. That's why I said in, in uh, Proverbs 13, um, talk about the law of association, you associate with fools, you'll be destroyed. Yeah. Didn't he say it? Yeah. Watch this. Whew. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of out there now. I'm going to need you. Stay with me, okay? Uh, okay, watch this. Uh, so Jonah had, uh, Jonah went down to sleep. Verse 6. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. Watch this. And they said to one another, oh, Come and let us cast lot that we may know for who, this call, who caused this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lot and it fell on Jonah. I wonder who caused that to happen. <laughs> Watch this. And they said to him, uh, uh, please tell us for who causes this trouble upon us. What's your occupation? What's your name? Well, where are you from? Who your mama is? <laughs> oh, that's basically what he was saying. Verse 9. So he said to them, I'm a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. Verse 10. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Hey man, why you bring all this stuff on us? For the men knew he fled from the presence of the Lord because he told them. Like God, at least he told them. But you need to ask people, hey man, are you, you, hey uh, bro, can I, can I come, come, come stay with you for about six months? Uh, uh, six, uh, you know what's the first thing you need to ask him? Not if you're going to pay rent. You know what's the first thing you need to ask him? You all right, you right with God? You right with God? That's good. That's good. Sister, the dude, they want to they hook up with you. They want to hook up you. They want to be your, do your dude. <laughs> you don't need to ask him how much money he's sitting on, how much money he's making, what it, where he's working at. You need to ask him, you right with God. Because however money he got, he's going to lose it. And sister, too, ask her. I know she's far. <laughs> but you ask her, you right with God? Because I don't need no drama, baby. I got enough on TV. I got TSTV. What's that station? Say, say we know drama. TNT. Yeah, say, I can get all the drama just watching somebody else's. I don't need my own. I'm serious. And I know, we la I know we're laughing. But see, this is the order of God. We're talking about obedience. Somebody can jack your life up. It only takes one person. Add Samson. Amen. So I need to know, you all right with God? So, so you know, we have, we have application things for people working in ministry. And we have pointed questions. We just need to know. I mean, you know, we don't, we don't do no investigation background. Well, we do on some people. <laughs> people working with the children, we, we check them out. But, but, but we want to know up front. See, a lot of folks can't pass the application. They're like, ah, oh, no, I, I, I can't be working here. And that's, what, that's okay. But, but who are you letting into your life? That's why we only got a few friends. Because I ain't got time to be interviewing folks. <laughs> I ain't got time to be interviewing everybody coming. No, 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 no. <laughs> because, but, but he told them, I already told y'all, I'm running from God. I'm running from him. He told them. Look at verse 12. So they said to him, um, what shall we do to you that the sea may come for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. Watch this. Look at what he said. Look at what, look at what the boy said. And he said to them, pick me up and throw me over. <laughs> then the sea will, will become calm for y'all. For I know all this is happening because of me. Now you know what obedience will say? If I find out, I can talk to you because I know you ain't going to quit coming to church. Okay. Hey, bro, you know, I love you, man, but, you know, your, 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 your life jacked up right now. Mm -hmm. And so Satan got access to you. If I hook up with you, he got access to me. Unless you come to me and say, hey, bro, I need some help. I need to be free from this. I thought, okay, well, I can cast that thing out. You ready? Yeah. Like, okay. In Jesus' name, come on out. Okay. Now, let's go play racquetball. Yeah. But if you're like, I'm, man, 
I'm working on it, but I ain't ready yet. Okay, well, I tell you what, bro. When you get ready, uh, maybe we can talk. Yeah. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but I just told you. Didn't, yeah. Look at it. Now, watch this. <clears throat> this is not even my lesson today. I got something totally different. Didn't I have something totally different? Yeah. First of all, it was good, too, but this is good. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Look at verse 13. Okay, okay, stop right there. Look up. <laughs> no, 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 because I'm, I'm going to drill this. You're going to get this. What did Jonah say to do to stop the storm? Oh. Go ahead, cut me loose, and then your life will calm down. When bad people leave your life, bad stuff stops happening. Being out of the will of God is expensive, man. Those of y'all talking about getting married, do a thorough investigation. I ain't even talking about credit. First thing I would do is, you obey your parents. What y'all say over there? Somebody say, yeah, yeah. How you, what's, your, what's your relationship with your mom and your daddy? I can't stand, oh, you can't stand him, you can't stand me either. Because the Bible says, it is not going to be well with you. So go ahead, fix that. And then we can talk. You understand? That's the Bible, y'all. That's the Bible. I wouldn't, mm. Okay, let me show you this. This is good. I still like counseling. Look at verse 13. Nevertheless, now what did, just, what, me, what did Jonah say? Throw me off, right? And then what happened? Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Nevertheless, the men rolled hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Now you know what that means? Sometimes we want to have mercy on people. And we're going to work hard. We're going to pray harder. Shaka <laughs> Rabahaya. We're going to pray harder. We're going to work harder. We're going to believe God harder. And we're going to fast. And we're going to pray. And we're going to roll. And we're going to roll. And we're going we're gonna to do more gymnastics. We're going to do more. We're going we're gonna, to. Oh. We, 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 we're going to get this thing. In the name of Jesus. We're going we're gonna to get a, a whole gallon of oil. Sling it. <laughs> Bring it everywhere, and, and we're going to get the demon out this house. <laughs> they roll harder. Sometimes we think, if I just pray harder, if I do more confessions, if I serve in all the minutes and be on time, everything will be all right. What did they happen to the wind? got worse. I just start going to church every at least six days in a row, six, six, six times straight. Obedience says, take him off the boat. Now, I, 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 I used to preach this. I haven't preached that in a while. But I used to preach that about people with their kids. You know, Can I go there for a minute? Yes. Okay. You know, and, and I can talk, I can talk to we can talk to this. Cause we, we had to we had to throw all overboard one time. Amen. Off the ship for a season. How many of y'all remember how many y'all say when we let's see, some of y'all didn't know? Yeah, we told everybody. Our son gone. He crossed the line, he gone. <laughs> Off the ship. They see some of y'all ain't 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 <laughs> Oh, I ain't got no socks on today. <laughs> Some of y'all afraid to make a move. You want to keep trying harder. They of age. They know right from wrong. And they're disrespecting you. Challenging you. And you, but you're going to try harder. 
No. No, they need to. You, you need, I'm not saying. I'm not. Okay, the pastor friendly is not saying. Well. <laughs> see, you, you're trying to solve things. There's a reason God said that. And, and oh man, that's a whole. Golly, that's a. I don't even hate to go there because I would have to teach a whole lot of stuff so you won't think I'm just saying throw them out to the wolves. <laughs> Who said that? You said that? You got kids? Okay. All right. They ain't bringing your boat down? No wonder you say that so loud because you ain't got nobody sitting next to you like, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy, what, what, you, what you talking about, Dad? Okay. But see, see, but see, you can move in with your sister and take her boat down. Say that. That's right. Say that. Right. You know, if I had somebody living with me and all hell would break loose in the house, I'd call a meeting. <laughs> Y'all think I'm laughing. I mean, I, no, been there, done that. But see, see, obedient and, <laughs> golly, what was that? Oh, so, so people, sometimes parents try to work harder and harder. Instead of putting responsibility where it belongs. Yes, sir. You're doing this. You need to make some changes. Now, now, if you can't handle this, go find some place where you can handle and do what you got to do. Get back up there, boy. Well, that's the Bible. And, and that's what God was trying to teach it. Because, see, uh, uh, Jonah was God's son, a child. That's how God is training, teaching his child. Say, son, if you don't want to flow with me, well, go ahead. If you don't want to do what I told you to do, go ahead, go to Tarsus. Go ahead. You know, at least Jonah paid his own way down there. Right. He never God to send him no money. Because <laughs> sometimes they won't be rebellious and they want you to finance the thing. <laughs> the devil is a liar, ain't it? <laughs> but these kids looking at me like, <laughs> I don't like this church. I'm glad you ain't my dad. I'm glad too. <laughs> anyway. Verse, watch this verse. Never let the men roll harder to land. This, this doesn't just apply to kids. Right about it. Some of us got husbands or wives. And you know what's going on. And you keep hoping stuff gets better. Why y'all instigating? <laughs> and you hoping stuff get better. Call him on it. You can't do that here. You need to go find somewhere else. You, you want her? Go be with her then. You wonder why the kids got allergies and whatnot? We don't make that connection. You wonder why they acting up in school? You wonder why they, got, why they drinking, got, got alcohol issues? What y'all do to me, y'all? <laughs> yeah, we don't make the connection. There's a connection. You can't, you can't bring, open your door, your house to the. You can't open your ship to that kind of stuff and expect everything to be all right. Yes. Just because they don't see you, demons see you. Oh, and when, and when, uh, and when you're doing that, they say, "Well, we got a straight shot. Oh. Everybody is free, free game up in here." I don't know who this all this is for, but go on and receive it. Because this is how, this is how, oh man, this is how you Satan proof your house. He has to have an opening. He, the balance of power has been given to us. And all he does, he deceives us into opening the door. The Bible says he seeks whom he can devour. He can't come in everybody's house. Can't come in everybody's life. So why is all this happening? I'm I'm praying, Pat, Pat, I'm praying, Pat, I'm going to church. I understand that. What are they doing? <sighs> Verse thirteen. Never let the men rode hard to return to land, but they couldn't, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, we pray, O oh Lord. Please do not let us perish for this man's life. And do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O oh Lord, 
have done as it pleased you. Look at the next verse. So they picked Jonah up. They said, hey, preacher, we're sorry, man. <laughs> we got to do what we got to do. <laughs> so they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging. Now, I don't think it gets any more plainer than that. They removed the problem. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice. They gave an offering <laughs> and took some vows. <laughs> so, now I was talking about obedience, wasn't I? And that's part of it. Um, wow. Let me see if I can uh, connect. Ooh, Jesus. Obedience. Now, okay, yeah, let's do this. Um, Pastor, why does it seem so difficult to obey God? Can we do that? Yeah. Okay, then I'll let you go. Why does it seem so difficult? No, sometimes it doesn't seem that. Why is it so difficult to obey God? Well, because <laughs> God will only ask you to do something outside of your comfort zone. Obedience requires you to move outside of your comfort zone and, and, and God is always trying to stretch you beyond where you are. He wants us to grow. And so when he challenges you, you know, I call this stage the first stage where it's uncomfortable. It's called the trembling stage, and some of my veterans have heard me teach this before. But that's the stage where it's uncomfortable it's uncertain. I'm really not sure. I really don't know. But I, I, I know God is telling me, but it's, 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 it's trembling. It's, it's a place of uncertainty. And what if I fail? And what if, what if I don't succeed? Because we all want something comfortable. We all want to stay right where we are. Yeah. And God, like, you're already there. See, God puts, puts a demand on what's inside of you. He puts a demand on, that's called potential. Potential is that what you have what has not come forth yet, and you don't even know. See, listen, forget, you know, people, you know what the world does? The world tried to, they give you all these tests, IQ tests, all that. Listen, can't no IQ test determine your ability? Okay, let me go on over here. Can't no IQ test determine the greatness that's inside of you. IQ, SAT, ACT, can't no test determine the greatness that's inside of you. God put some stuff in you they ain't got no test for. And then, but the only way for that to come forth is for God to put a demand on it. He will, he will call, that's what he did for Abraham. He called for something precious that Abraham hadn't done before. And he'll call for something precious in your life. He'll put a demand on that potential, and the only reason he does that because he knows what's in you. Amen. So don't, so don't get in the habit of always backing down because something seems hard. God, if it's God, you're like, okay, God, you know what's in me. You can't, you engineered me. You know what, you know what I have in this treasure. There's some things you, there's some things you're doing now you never thought you could do five years ago, but you stepped out there and you're like, oh wow, I can do this. I can do this. Look at that. Look at me. I was telling, I remember when I first, the first time I spoke publicly, the first time I did some public speaking, it was in leadership school. I'll never forget it. Never forget it. I never, I couldn't even sleep that night before. I was so nervous. I was scared. I mean, I'd rather jump off the Empire State Building <laughs> than stand up there and talk in front of those people for five minutes. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. But I'll never forget this. I got up there and started talking. And all of a sudden, Man, it's like all of heaven broke loose. And I talk, I didn't need my notes. I just talk like I'm doing, I just talk. I'm like, Whew. and they stood up and gave me a standing ovation. And they was like, oh my God, this was in the Air Force, man. This is the leadership school. And they said, man, we wanted to hear you talk all day. And I said, I think I got something. <laughs> I'm saying that's when I knew, and that was a breakthrough moment. I was sweating, big man. My, my pants were sticking all together. I was, I was sweating, man. But but that's how I knew. I got something. 
And I've been talking ever since. I've been talking ever since. But that was a breakthrough moment. There's some stuff you can do, man. You can do. You can do. But, but you got to face that giant and face that fear and let that potential explode on the inside of you. And God, and that's what God is saying. Listen, so, so in that trembling stage, that's that trembling stage. But you got to step. Well, I don't know if I can do it. Listen, I didn't tell the first group this. I'm going to tell you all this. See, once you take a step, see, God only gives you information on a need-to-know basis. He only gives you grace on a need-to-have basis. Watch this. You don't need finishing grace until you get started. He's not going to give you all the grace, then you're going to start. No, he gives you grace on a need-to-have basis. That's why he told the lepers. He said, you go show yourself to the priest. The Bible says, as they went, every step they took, the healing came. Every step they took, the healing came. He told Peter, let down the net for a cat. There was no cat and nothing in the net until he let down the net. He, the grace comes on a need to have basis. There's some things God is telling you to do. And you're waiting for a sign. That sign going to come when you do. When you obey. On a need-to-know basis. God didn't give you everything up front. So quit sitting back waiting for stuff to happen. Make something happen. Amen. You're not looking for a path. Cut one. Amen. Cut one. I was telling them Wednesday night. I called them to rewrite statistics. They said I was a slow learner. Rewrite that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> rewrite that. Yeah, I know I didn't do get, get good grades in school. So what? Look at me now. Yes, sir. It ain't how you start, player. It's how you. But, but I had to, you know, you have to face that thing. And you're like, God, okay, God, you say I'm more than a conqueror. I'm conquering this stuff. He gives the grace on a need to have basis. If you're not doing anything, he's not providing anything. If you're not doing anything, he's not going to push it. He's going to give it to somebody, somebody that's doing something. Okay, that's the trembling stage. What's the next stage? Okay, you go from trembling. Oh, watch this. That's normal, by the way. It's normal to feel like that. Amen. Moses felt like that. Gideon felt like that. Jeremiah felt like that. Jesus even said, Lord, is there any other way we can do this cross thing? Yeah. Didn't he say it? Yeah. He said, is there any other way we can do this redemption thing? Yeah. I ain't feeling this cross. I don't think he, well, I think he did say that. Why? Because he said, man, this is, this is going to be tough. But he said, nevertheless. And then grace came. Man, that's good. Say that's normal. Not wanting to do it because I'm scared or uncertain uh, 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 or don't know what's going to happen. It's normal. It's normal. It's normal. It's normal. Not to want to. It's normal to be afraid to fail. It's normal. But God gives you grace all the way. Man, I feel so good. Okay. Okay. From the trusting stage, I mean, from the trembling stage, you got to go to trusting. What's that? Trusting, even though reason and logic has a stronger argument than the truth. Even though reason and logic has a stronger argument, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know anybody else who did that. Who else did that? I don't know. Have you ever done that? Anybody in your family? Nope. Huh. Anybody in your church ever? Nope. Do you have a, a scientific study and proof that that? Nope. But I'm trusting. And when you go from trembling to trusting, and the next step is triumph. Because triumph is when you, it's a place of discovery. That's what happened over there in Korea. That was the place, that, it was the hardest year of my life. Hardest year of my life. But that was the place of discovery. That's when I, let me close this thing. That's when I, that's when I, see I heard about Jehovah Jireh. I sang songs about Jehovah. My mama told me about Jehovah. But over there in 1990, in Kumsan, Korea, that's when I met Jehovah. See, I don't need anybody to pump me up now. I know him. I mean, I praise God. I listen to preachers. Every day, I listen to sermons every day. I, I'm always constantly feeding myself. But I don't need nobody to pump me up. I know him. Yeah. I don't need nobody to inspire me. 
I'm inspired by my relationship now. I know Jehovah Jireh. I know Jehovah Shama, the God who never leaves me, never lets me down, never go, never just leave me here and go away. I'll leave me. I'm done with you, friendly. No, he dropped me when I'm messing up. Goodness and mercy. Y'all remember goodness and mercy? Yes, sir. Goodness and mercy still following me. I know Jehovah Shama. I know the peace of God when everything else looks like it ought to be. Listen, you ought to be pulling out all of your hair. Shalom. I don't just know about him. I know him now. But that's when I found out about that. And so now, that was a place of discovery. And that's all I'm trying to get you to do. Now, get the tape from first service. I, I did a lot more teaching. Well, I did some teaching this time. But you can get both of them, put it together, get a good sermon. <laughs> but, but God, let me do, I need to cover this set place. One more place, one more place. First Corinthians chapter 12. Good God Almighty. Hurry up. Oh man, I'm, I'm next week. Come back next week. I'm gonna show you something. Gonna blow your hair back, part it to the side. Might even give you a mohawk. I don't know. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter twelve. First Corinthians chapter twelve. Did y'all enjoy Brother Freed last week? Yeah. Okay. He's getting ready to go and preach down to prison. He's not leaving because he don't like the sermon. <laughs> y'all enjoy Lynn last week? She's sitting here. And I got my distinguished guest with me today. <laughs> that would be Miss Val, 86. How you doing, beautiful? It's so good to see you. I've been missing you. Okay, we'll talk. Okay. We'll talk later, okay? We'll talk later. Okay. <laughs> That's my girlfriend. I told you he was a player over there. He got, he got girlfriends. Yeah, that's my girlfriend. That's right. Miss Bow, you tell him. Put it, in the, put it on Facebook. <laughs> okay, first, first Christian chapter 12. Look at this. Because this is, this, is, this, is, this is good. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. Who please? You in first Corinthians 12, 18? Yeah. Okay, now let's read it again. First Corinthians 12, I didn't say verse 18. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. Now I wanted to read that because sometimes we have the idea that I can, even in the body, I can do, pick and choose what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it, where I want to do it. And this lets me know he's talking about the universal church, but it also applies to the local church that God set people in certain in certain offices in certain places in certain duty for instance if God told you I want you to sing in the choir you're like, I don't want to sing in the choir I want to sing on the praise team well God didn't set you on the praise team I know but I want to that's what I want to sing <laughs> what I it's just I'm just saying um, that's an example you want me to use that example use another one okay well see See, if God set you there, he, see, you don't get set as you please. I'm set as God pleases. And if God set me here, I need to stay set until God resets me. Yeah. See, people, I was telling them this morning, you know, we, we've been in church, we've been in, say, 30 years. We've always been in church. We've only gone about maybe members, been members about maybe four churches. We don't, I don't, I was reading something not too long ago. They said people in, in, in People change church about every three years now. And, and see, God doesn't, God doesn't set you, reset you that often. You don't need to get calibrated that often. That's right. And so, here's my point. The reason I say that is because, see, you may be say, well, I want to come. I'm not saying I'm just you. you I want to come here because it's close to the house. But God, did God set you there? Oh, that's good. Or, or I want to go over here because they have a, they have a, they have, they have this ministry. Understand that. But did God set you there? Because you can be over there because that ministry is there. But now you're out of obedience. And now the blessing of God is off your life. Because now you're doing as you please, not as God please. Amen. And so what happens is sometimes people get angry one with another in the body. That's the way devil, the devil stirs stuff up. To get you mad at this one. I ain't coming to the church no more. Okay. Okay. But you can't. You can't leave because you're mad at her. You can only leave when God resets you. Because you said God 
set you and this God set me here. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. So my point is, I can't just do what I want to do. Even if the leadership is crazy, and if God, unless God reset me, I got to stay right there. Right there. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot of emails on that one. Okay, now I wasn't gonna try. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. We had a situation. This was this was way back in the early '80s, and I told. <laughs> can I use the same illustration about the? Yeah, where well, the pastor was screwing the women in the church, and so what? And so he was screwing the women, and. And I'm like, okay, okay, we, we probably got to get up out of here. Well, he wouldn't, he wouldn't mess with her, though. Hey, that wasn't going to happen. You know, we don't, we don't get down like that. And so, and so, you know, so people automatically assume, I'm out of here. Well, if God set me there, I'm asking God, do you want me to leave? No. Okay. Now, now we prayed for the guy. We prayed for him, and he got straight. Actually, he went off to 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 one of them places, got help, you know, for his condition and uh, and and all of that. But here's what happened: God used God used us. We had a, a ministry with kids, and that thing exploded, exploded. All these kids started getting filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, young kids. The ministry exploded. Our services was huge. The kids' services. Even grown-ups start coming to our services. Parents start coming to our services. I want to get filled with the Holy Ghost too. The pastor, the pastor's kids. We got them filled with the Holy Ghost, and they turned their life around. The pastor gave us the checkbook to the church. Now you ain't supposed to do that. That's, that's against the law. I, I can't do. Don't, I ain't giving nobody the checkbook. <laughs> but here's my point. What if we were left because we like mm, the pastor? Man. He's human. See, yeah. folks forget pastors are human. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. We forget that. We expect pastors to be, you know, like they're a machine. They don't have issues. We got issues. Yeah. We're working through stuff all the time. Yeah. But my point is, a lot of times people just run because she made me mad. He made me mad. He made me mad. And you know the first lady made me upset. <laughs> but if God set you, see, it's about obedience. God, you set me here. I'm standing here. I remember one time at this organization I'm part of, part of now, and I've been part of for the last 17 years. I remember, I think about year two, there was a man. He's a real famous guy, real famous guy. And, and he dogged me out. I mean, he, he dogged me out. He dogged me out. And uh, I'm like, mm, you know, I don't need to be around these suckers anyway. <laughs> you know, that's that ghetto came out. You know, I, you know, I mean, I don't, need, I don't need them. And uh, the Lord said, you keep your tail right here. That was maybe 15 years ago. And it's amazing how, how because you don't let people have said, I'm not here for him. I'm here because God told me to be here. Amen. Now me and him, I got him on my secular phone now. I, can just, I dial it, got him on speed. I've been to a big old 30,000 square foot house and everything. Now we buddies. And not only that, millions of doors open because... See, that was my set place. And the devil was trying to get me out. Yeah. I wouldn't even, I probably wouldn't even, I probably, I don't know, I, I'd probably still be here. But my point is, if God set them in the body, don't you let anybody run you off of your set place. I don't care who ticked you off, including me. If I tick you off, you pray, Lord, is that the tick I need to get up out of here? You listening to me? Just because somebody mess up don't mean now 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 this is sound like a uh, contradiction of what I preached earlier about throwing folks off the ship. <laughs> you still gotta let okay Lord, what's your plan here? What's your plan? Cause see everybody be telling you. See I heard Pastor preach that sermon. You know you got to kick him off. That, if that ain't what God told you, you don't. That is an option. It's a consideration. Because she was about to kick me off the ship one time. Aren't y'all glad she did? Yeah. Well, some, some of them ain't glad. Some of them ain't glad. Like, she she should have kicked you to the curb. <laughs> but, uh, you know, amen. But I wanted to bring that to you because disobedience. 
Disobedience will block your progress. Some of you, God asks you to do some stuff, simple stuff, and you ain't got time for it. One thing about this younger generation, this younger generation, I'm not going to put the number on it. They want the, God's highest, best, and excellent, but they don't want to contribute. A whole different, it's a whole different, I got a whole, my whole mindset got to change about church now because, you know, we got a lot of younger people coming and it's like, see the older folks know, man, we serve, that's what you do. You, you serve, you, you help people, you get involved and, and the younger ones don't want to do nothing, but they want everything. I probably shouldn't end like that, but it's the truth. It's the truth. And, and, and if God asks you to do something, you are blocking your progress by not, um, you know, it may be, you know, going across, <laughs> cleaning your, drive, your, your neighbor's driveway. Obedience. Obedience. If God spoke to you today, you need to act on that. God best come through obedience and, and, and the, the mountains move through obedience. Every head bowed, every eye closed. It's just a minute. Father, thank you so much. For the wisdom of God today. My prayer is that not one of us would allow what you spoke to our hearts to be, to be disregarded. I believe that you stirred in every one of us the desire to obey at whatever cost. And we're so grateful for that now. And I bless you and honor you for it. In the name of Jesus, we seal the word of God. Now before we go, I always like to give people an opportunity to act on what they've heard, to act on what the Spirit of God is telling them. And I have three things, three appeals for you. First one is to be born again. That's the first one right there. That's the first one. Maybe you're like Jonah. Maybe you're running away from God. You know better, but you're running away from God. And God brought you here today. Because I, I did not even mention that in the first service. God brought you here today to let you know you're about to get off the ship. There, there's something being prepared to swallow you up. And you can avert that right now. We didn't look at it, but there was a fish prepared just for Jonah. But Jonah did cry out and got delivered. Everybody don't make it out of the whale's belly. God may be trying to tell you, listen, there's something prepared for you to take you out. You can avert that and abort that plan today by giving your life to Jesus, by turning back to God. That's my prayer today. Saints, I need you praying because I just, I, I know right now God is, God is calling folks. He's putting up a red flashing light. Say, listen, pastor went that way just for you. I need you. I need you to make that decision today. Come on, don't, don't allow your heart to be troubled. Make that decision today. If you're here today, maybe you know God has called you into the ministry, but you've just put it on hold. You're like, okay, whenever I get around to it, listen, that is not complete obedience. God holds you accountable, and the devil has access to, for, to you as, as target practice. Don't let it happen to you. Don't let it happen to your family, your children. Don't let it happen to your house. If there's trouble in your house, God is saying, listen, somebody need to make the move. Your kid may be here with you. You may already know. You may, you may already know. You don't have to pray. Nobody has to show you. You may already know. And your child, you need to take your child and say, listen, you need to, we need to go to this altar and make some stuff right. I'm tired of this hell in this house. In the name of Jesus, it stops here today. I want to pray for you. We want to turn this thing around. We want to cause a calm to come on your ship today. If you're here today, you're saved, but you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. You need the power of God to be able to navigate and to stay the course. I want to pray for you today. And then finally, if you believe that God, this is your set place. If this is your set place, you believe it is. You don't, you know, you don't have a church. You're just kind of running around, but you need a set place. If you don't have one and you believe this is a good place, I want you to join this church today. This is a place for you. You know, I, I trust and believe that I can help you. I can help you. I can teach you this word in a way that you will expire. Expire for God's best. Now, while the saints are praying, 
in the name I'm going to rebuke every force every hindering force in Jesus name I declare and decree freedom to make decisions freedom by the spirit of the living God and I loose every stronghold that would hold people back now I'm going to pray if you if you're not new here you know how I do if you're new here I'm going to ask you to pray uh, allow me to pray for you I'm going to ask you to lift your hand if you say pastor I'm a candidate for one of those things to give my life to the Lord rededicate my life get filled with the Holy Spirit or to even join the church I want you to pray for me if I'm talking to you would you raise your hand up high that will signal to me that you are ready that will send a signal to heaven that I mean business that will let the devil know he is out of your life forever glory to God there anybody here would you lift your hand up high please I want to pray and release my faith right now so that you can walk in a rarefied atmosphere of God's best I want to do that now raise your hand up high please okay all right I see one hand over here that is so awesome anybody else just say pastor I'm ready to obey God I've been putting things off and putting things off and this ship is not where it needs to be it's not rolling like it should I want to do that now there's another okay I see a hand over here to my left awesome now the reason why I do this because see there's a, there's a grace and anointing here for those that will obey God now there's a grace now and so God wants to do what he can do he can do it less than five minutes under this anointing is there anybody else God's dealing with your heart you ready to make a decision would you raise your hand please in Jesus name anybody else I want to pray for you I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut it off here in a minute another hand over there yes sir okay couple hands in the back room there I see those anybody else God dealing with you it's time for you to make that move whatever it is it's time for you to make that move you ready to do it okay anybody else I don't want to leave you out raise your hand up high please all right okay now let's all stand